Hello and welcome. Today we're working on how to calculate the number of periods and we're going to use Excel. So the Excel function is called NPER for number of periods. So let's get started. Hello, my name's Jeff from Finally Learn where I help you finally learn financial skills like these financial functions. This topic is also called time value of money. So you can search for that time value of money or search for financial functions in Excel. And Excel is great to calculate these types of problems. So this is the fifth in the series of looking at individual functions. And so the first one we did was future value, which is a lump sum, a single amount at the end of the problem. The second video was present value, a lump sum at the beginning of the problem. Payment is calculating the stream of payments. The annuity is what it's also called. Now they could be plus or minus, and we'll see that here in this problem. And then the rate calculating the periodic interest rate. We're to the point where we're doing number five is the number of periods, and remember, it could be years, it could be half years, it could be quarters every three months, or it just could be months. Now, one tip, present value and future value are opposite, so generally they're going to be the different signs, and we'll make present value negative and future value positive. So let's get started with our first problem. Let's say how many years it takes to grow for a, a single amount we're going to calculate. All right, so let me get rid of the, the numbers here, and let's just read it and start fresh. Kevin invests $10,000 and wants it to grow to $25,000. If the return is 8%, how many years will it take? Well, because it doesn't say this is months or quarters or whatever, then we have to assume it's years. So the periods per year is just going to be one. Okay, I've set up a little template. In fact, I'm going to work uh, all the way on a template every time. Do the payments happen at the end of the period or beginning of the period? Well, there's no payments. It doesn't really matter on this one, but it's going to be zero. Well, typically, most problems, payments happen at the end of the period. And we're going to calculate the number of periods. And we're going to look at the rate is 8%. I already have that formatted. Now watch, this is not 8 as a number. This is 0.08 as a decimal. And I've formatted it for percentages, so it's 0 0.08 is the, uh, the number. The present value is going to be 10000 Now, here's where we're going to have to put this in as a negative. I'm paying 10000 so that's minus, because I want to receive 25000 in the future. And we're going to try to figure out how long does it take. Well, is there any payment that we're making to make this happen faster? There's not, so we make that zero. Now, I'm going to use a little function called formula text. So let me show you here, formula text. Formula text, I'm going to point to this where I'll have the formula in just a minute. And of course it gives me nothing right now, but let's build the formula. The formula is NPER. Now, the way I like to show it is if you go up here to the formula bar, you could type in the formula, you could type in the formula here. But I think it's easier to show if I use the formula builder and I'm gonna put FX, hit that FX, and I'm gonna search for NPER. It's, since I did it last, then it's, it's on the top of that list. So the rate is going to be 8%, and I'm going to use the practice of dividing by the periods per year. Dividing by one doesn't help, but when we have monthly or quarterly, it's going to be really important that we put in the periodic rate. The payment is going to be zero, but we're going to point to that. I'm not going to type that in. I'm going to use a template like this so I can change the numbers and we kind of figure out what's going on. The present value is a negative 10,000 because we're paying 10,000. The future value is a positive 25000 what we want to have at the end of the period. And then the payments are going to be zero. So it's going to take us 11.91 years, about 12 years, to make this 25000 to make the 10000 up to 25000 Well, we could also figure out, we could put in, well, what if we saved $1,000 a year? That would you know, help us get to that goal a little bit faster. We can just plug that in. All right, so we kind of have our format here and our um, template so let's keep going so how many months does it take if you put in monthly payments so let me clear all this out and I'm just showing you the formula text every time so I'm not gonna refer to it every time Shelly invests three hundred dollars per month and wants it to grow to twenty five thousand so she apparently doesn't have anything so we'll start with zero and the payment is going to be negative 300. She's paying out of her pocket 300 and wants it to grow to 25,000. So this is a similar problem to the previous one, except the previous one we started with a lump sum and didn't add anything monthly. 
uh, this problem says, look, I don't have any amount right now, but I can save $300 per month and it'll grow to 25,000. Well, what kind of rate do we have? Well, it's 8%. We also need, because this is a monthly problem, we're gonna put 12 and the payments doesn't say it happened at the beginning of the month, so we're gonna assume the payments happen at the end of the month, okay? So the same formula, you notice it's gonna be the same formula, it's gonna be number of periods. So the rate is 8% divided by 12. So here's what happens. It's a little bit less than 1% per month, right? 8% divided by 12 is gonna be about 0.6% per month. So you can see the decimal there. So the payment is gonna be a negative 300, the present value is zero, the future value is 25,000, and the type is zero. So we're gonna say, hey, that's 66 and a half months. And so what you could do on the side, here's what I've done, is said, well, 66 and a half months divided by the 12, well, we're talking about five and a half years. If you save $300 per month, and you put it in an account, and that account earns 8%, in five and a half years, you're gonna have $25,000. So if somebody came to you and said, hey, would you like 25,000? They say, yeah, I'll take it. Well, you can get this by if you just save $300 a month, and you can get an 8% return over that period of time. So a little bit of savings every month in five years, in six years, in 10 years can, can grow to big numbers. All right, the next one we're gonna do is Let's do this if we have a problem where we're going to make periodic in investments. We're putting number one and number two together. Brett has an account with 10,000. So let's put the negative 10,000, starts with 10,000, invest $300 per month. So this is a combination of the first two problems. He wants it to grow to 100,000. So we're going to grow more than the 25. He wants it to grow to 100,000. Uh, we can get a return. Let's assume the return is 9%. And um, it's going to be monthly, so we put 12 here, and the payments happen at the end of the month. So he has an account with $10,000. He invests $300 per month. He wants it to grow to $100,000. How long will it take? Well, this could be motivating. You say, well, you know, just a little bit every month. Just keep putting in $300, and then after so many months, you'll have $100,000. So let's do this. NPER. So the rate is gonna be 9% divided by 12. And I, I, I'm not typing in numbers in the formula. So the payment is gonna be negative 300. The present value is negative 10,000. The future value is 100,000. And the payments happen at the end of the period. So what you see is, this is the formula that we built. And at first you think, I don't know what all that means, but you saw how we did it step by step. So it's 138 months, 137.8. So 138 months and divided by 12, that is 11 and a half years, you'll have 100,000. So in the first problem, you started with 10,000. The second problem, you just added $300 per month. This third one puts them both together. Well, what if you want to figure out, well, what does it take to get to the 25,000? Well, it only takes three years at that point. 35 months, three years. So getting started and putting in monthly amounts gets there much, much faster. All right, the next one here is what if we have an account and we have periodic withdrawals? So we're in the situation where we have money and somebody needs, maybe it's a retiree and they wanna take money out. How many months will it take for them to grow or whatever? So let's say Shelby has 1.2 million and withdraws 10,000 at the beginning, keyword, of each quarter. She wants it to grow to $2 million. The, if the return is 9%, how many quarters will it take? Well, this is quarter, so it's four periods per year. The payments happen at the beginning of the month. The periodic interest rate is 9%. She starts with 1.2 million, need to make that um, negative. She's withdrawing 10,000. So this is a positive cash to Shelby, so this is gonna be 10,000 positive and we want it to grow to two million. Is that even possible? Could she take out money and the account still grow? Well, looks like we can because, see, if you get 9%, um, let's do 10%. 10% on 1.2 million would be 120,000, and she's taking out 10,000 
times four, she's taking out 40,000. So 9% will grow it faster than, than the money she's taking out. So once again, number of periods, and you see it's the same thing every time. I'm taking 9% divided by four, which is the quarterly rate, and the payment is gonna be a positive 10,000. The present value is a negative 1.2 million. The future value, we want it to grow to $2 million, and the payments happen at the beginning, so it's a one of the period. So here's our calculation. It is 33 into the 33rd month, and so that is, I'm sorry, 33rd quarter, we're in quarters, so that is eight, a little bit more than eight years. So 32 divided by four, we're talking about into the eighth year. Eight years, you would have $2 million. Now, what if you didn't take out any? Well, you have that in about five and three quarters year, about almost six years, you would have that amount of money. So that amount of money taking out each quarter is not going to be really significant in the growth. It can still grow to $2 million. All right, we have two other problems. One is, let's say, uh, and I'm going to keep the number of periods in there because you see how we do it every time. So let's just, this is how we use a template. So if we build the template, then this is going to solve the problem. This is the same formula we've used four different times. So what if Ashley has 1.2 million and withdraws 10,000 each month? If the return is 7%, how long will the money last? This is a concern we would have. We don't want our money to run out. So let's do monthly periods. Payments happen at the end of the period. And we say the interest rate is 7%. The present value is negative 1,200,000. We're withdrawing 10,000 per month and the future value is gonna be zero. So in that scenario, we would say the money would last 207 months or 17 and a quarter years, a little bit more than 17 years. What if you got 0% rate of return on your money? Well, the money would last 10 years. If you got a 5% rate, the money would last about 14 years. So building a template is easier to solve and you kind of do a what if analysis. So let's go back to the 7%, so that's our question and that's our answer. Or right, we have one more. And this one sometimes is shocking for people. So let's get rid of these numbers. The same problem, you see we, we've done the number of periods just like before, but let's do a credit card. Let's say Jamie has a credit card balance of $10,000, ouch. Now, credit cards are very expensive. If you don't pay them off, you, you finance them over a long period of time, it's very, very expensive. So I'm trying to encourage you not to do that or to be motivated to pay that off early. So this is gonna be a monthly problem and payments happen at the end of the period. So Jamie has a credit card balance of $10,000. I'm gonna put in 10,000 as a positive. She's basically borrowed $10,000. The interest rate is 19%, ouch. Now we're really happy when we get a 10% return on our investments, but we're paying 19% on a credit card that is bad, right? That's That really hurts. Let's say the minimum payment, she's only gonna make the minimum payment and it's $200. We need to make a negative $200 and the future value is gonna be zero. How long does it take to pay off, pay off the credit card? Well, you see my formula here. It's gonna take essentially 100 months, which is eight and a third year. So into the ninth year, it's gonna take that long to pay off a credit card. Now, how much would you pay for on this credit card? If we paid $200 per month times essentially 100 months, that's gonna be, we're paying 19,971 on this credit card. So that's way, way, way too expensive. So if you're talking to Jamie, you say, hey, look, could you pay an extra $50 a month? So if you make it 250 a month, pay off this credit card, then it drops it from more than eight years down to five years, five and a third years, and it drops it from about 19, almost 20,000 to about 16,000. If you made $350 payments, you save even more. It's faster and you save more. A 19% credit card interest rate is very expensive. Don't do it. That's a way to lose a lot of money over time. I hope this information was helpful for you. 
If you like it, please hit that subscribe button and hit that thumbs up, and we'll see you on the next video.